I got crime stats, IQ studies, proof that Jared Diamond lied. And I got friends on the alt right. This is Official Black, and we're addressing him and some of the other people who have issues with him in this video. Golden Fox and Company, and I have some wonderful news. You, in fact, do not need to watch this video if you're Official Black or Golden Fox or any other friends. It's not world-ending that you do. I asked Black if I could do this video last week because I'm a little stressed due to some of my more regular subject matter that has seems to be making up my How Not to Bernie series. So in response to Official Black making a tweet why Golden Fox blocked him, I don't have the tweet anymore and that's just as well because there's some direct private messages there. So here goes. And also, I keep wanting to call you Serious Black. If I slip up, I do apologize. Ten examples on why Golden Fox might have blocked you. One. Two. And Jasper Pie? Who the fuck is Jasper Pie? Three. Also been the hardest for me to find any good videos that illustrates how autistic and cringy this guy is. His channel is pretty much dead, and the only good videos on him that I've found are from other channels in which he guest starred in. Four. You got this, Jasper. Just remember your lines this time. Ah, great. They don't even bother to animate simple walking. This video has been made on this year, by the way, 2017, so it's very recent. And if you're really that lazy, or if you just can't animate, then here's a crazy life hack. Don't show the legs as they walk. Hey, not to break up the examples, but how many people animate their OC's walking cycles? Off the top of my head, I think Brawny Book, and that's about it. Five. And can we come, please? That bitch is in this video too? I really should make a video on Sapphire, actually. Dear Official Black, did you know that Manga Comet is dating Sapphire Heart Song? We're already five in, and I can assume that you've pissed off everyone who likes Eliora, that likes Sapphire Heart Song, that likes Jasper Pie, and I'm not saying that you have to like these people. Like, we're not even halfway into the video. It's not the fact that you're willing to piss people off. That's fine. It's that you're shocked that this did it. Don't worry, there's a lot more to go. And I'm not even killing myself to get these examples. Number six. Oh my fucking god. Can I just say that I absolutely hate lightning bliss? I should really make a video on... You totally do have the freedom of speech. It's free. But I think a lot of people misunderstand that while you're able to say whatever the hell you want, well, for the most part, people don't have to like what's coming out of your mouth. Number seven. <laughs> cringy and retarded and bonkers Jasper Pie is. I may have made a video on Jasper Pie before, but I still think that he is really fucking cringy. Now again, Black, how many people who cover cringe in the fandom are generally accepted in the higher echelons of the community? Like, I'm not a fan of Jasper Pie. Quick tip, my man. Before I started publicly correcting AJ the Autistic Pony extensively, at least for the most part, more than the bare bones minimal, I kind of checked around and saw who in the higher-ups liked said guy. I was surprised because I was under the impression that everybody thought that AJ was lovable. The higher-up people in the community, in fact, did not feel that way. Surprisingly, few people liked AJ at his height in the fandom among the content creators and it only went downhill after that. Whereas Jasper has flourished, I for the life of me can't explain why. In fact, even saying that much, I'm sure I'm getting more than a dirty ass look for that. I understand, yeah, but I am however puzzled that the fandom is in fact built around friendship and some of you guys just don't seem to understand that that is more than just a meme, unlike the love and tolerate one. That people out there who are surprised that when you roast a friend the rest hate you, when you hit someone, you're potentially hitting their friends and their fans. I'm, I'm not saying it's fair. If you don't believe me, go ahead and call a John Enter fan cringy. There's a good chance that they're going to take personal offense. 8. I get that he's trying to be funny, but for me I just find it cringy and hard to watch. I honestly have no fucking idea who would find him funny. 
Because I don't think that being weird and random is considered to be funny. Also, most of the time when Jasper is featured in videos, he shows off his acting capabilities, which are also cringy. He is constantly loud and yelling and screaming and it's just plain annoying to listen to. Now I feel like I promised 10 examples, but after 8 I feel I made my point. I know what you're thinking FNGR, got it, Golden Fox is just butthurt and he's made out of 24 karat glass. Fuck him. Well you might think that, but here's a video from Ryan Reno Mills, it's called. Let's just commentate 28, it's a co-op, it covers British brony, red horse wearing a shirt, with Mary Sue. He's a commentator. Let's play a clip and find out whomst Mary Sue is. That means you're here with little old me. Okay, so that is creepy. I am calling 911. I'm calling 911. I'm calling 911. Yes, police, hurry. We have a nice guy situation. Come quick before he gets out the pocky and reaches ultimate euphoria. Ah! I guess this is Cooper. I have to serve you with something till my magic allows me to leave. Boy, does that sound familiar. Lady, run while you still can! The euphoria will be too much if it- ah! Wait. See the big bad commentary man picking on poor Blissey? Do you know what Goldie did? He came on to King of Limbo podcast with Ryan, who happened to co-host for the man. Um, so, okay. is there anyone in the analysis rift uh, that you haven't collabed with yet that you really want to? I think that all depends. Like, I won't lie, there are times I do I did want to do a collab with um, Firebrand. But knowing him in a way, like, I don't know if he would accept or not. And almost oh, half yeah. the time, I don't even think about, like, how I would make the collab work. And, and for a while, Ryan was even on pretty solid terms with Keyframe, uh, Goldie's main squeeze. So I can look you in the eye and say, no, it's not just because you treated Goldie's friends like shit. And he's some kind of illogical knob. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, maybe this Ryan guy is funnier than me. And you'd be right. But besides all that... I'm going to play you a clip of Miss Anthropony screaming at Golden Fox for about one minute, and then I'm going to play one minute of Miss Anthropony screaming at Lethal Aurora Mage, someone who Golden Fox is also cool with, or at least used to be. I don't know about it anymore. Bolts in a review on an episode where rarity is the focus, let's complain about how there are no blueberries in Applejack's cereal. If you're going to complain about something for not being what you want it to be rather than critiquing it for what it actually is, desist from spewing out nonsense in a situation where it doesn't make sense. You can write a well-paced story about a group of scientists who discover a cure for cancer, and I'm still not gonna like it if they're an asshole or a slob or lazy or an idiot or a know-it-all. And by the way, Calling filler on an episode where the girls didn't get their keys is like calling filler on an episode in season 1 that didn't mention the Grand Galloping Gala. If you've actually been paying attention, then you will know that for the most part it's a slice of life show and should be looked at as such. Sure, the characters' developments can be carried on from previous episodes, but I think Spike at Your Service would have still come across as an annoying soccer kick to the nuts even if his crush on Rarity was brought up from Secret to My Excess. The entire thing down. Say, Mage, while you're talking about Pinkie Pie's characterization in Season 4, why don't you bring up, and I'm just thinking out loud here, Maud fucking Pie! Seriously, you took all the negative representations and left out one of the single most widely recognized episodes in the season? Didn't Leap of Faith take place sometime after this episode? The least you could have done was reference it. Use a rock pun, draw a picture of her? I don't care. It feels kind of idiotic that in an attempt to talk about Pinkie Pie, you forgot to talk about her in interaction with her sister. But hey, why stop there? And I'll have you know, like a boss, in part because of Mage and a few other people, but I'm going to be cool and put Mage over for lols, Goldie sat down with Map, and to the best of my knowledge, there is zero heat between either of them right now. So you're probably wondering, come on dude, how come I don't get a chance? Well, Part of that being is, is misanthropony is misguided as he was, at least believed in what he said. You really are kind of just, you know, assing off. That's base minimal, though. If Brony Keemstar could be so kind as to give advice to Brony Leafy. You also did walk up and cited that you were friends with Shelly D and Vita. Now, this is going to be a little tricky. I do appreciate what Vita's done out in the open and some of the things that he's done behind the scenes recently, and Sheldon did help with Dusky Novel. Um, okay. And he's claiming it on, uh, what is the medical condition? I'm not claiming it on nothing. I'm just saying I was under a lot of stress all the uh, at the time. So, and, okay, hold, please don't interrupt me. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, go ahead. 
And when someone is under a lot of stress and they have severe adjustment disorder, that's what that's what triggers an episode is stress. And I was under a lot of stress because a lot of stuff was being piled on me and other stuff. And I was stressed out for a while. And so. I sh- and I should have stepped away from the computer and just sit and took a break. But I'm a stubborn fucking asshole. Okay, so hold up. So, so basically, what's going on is it is claimed that you ERP'd with somebody of a very young age, and are you saying you did that? Like, like what? What is your claim or, or response to this? I'm too much of a beta male to have gotten that confession on my own. And Sheldon, if you're listening, thank you very much. The Brony community and the children of the community owe you at least a partial debt in no way, shape, or form. Should it be undercut? I'm glad you were there. But you might not have known about this one. This is a video from Shelly D. It's called Shillframe Shekelstein. Get really drunk and beat the shit out of her and kill her. But the issue with this is it's sort of like, well, what if I leave my house and I get run over by a car? Like, the odds aren't really there. The, you know, if you, your parents are hitting you and there's assault charges being laid, if enough assault charges are accumulated, her father isn't going to be able to pay the bail. They're going to just cut the bail away straight away. They're not going to give her the option of bail. I mean, I just I just don't buy this. And I just want to let you guys know that there is a GoFundMe. There's a lot of money being earned. Another thing, Keyframe has not put any direct videos on her channel asking for help. It's all been through third parties, through her friends. Uh, her parents don't know about her online persona, so I don't see the issue. Why doesn't Keyframe put up her own videos? There must be some time in the day where she can talk quietly and ask for help if she really needed it. Now, believe me, I was scrambling to get people to come along to talk to Dusky to get that confession, and Sheldon stood and delivered, and insisted that the call be posted as is. He didn't want it to be dolled up. He wanted it warts and all. Oh, and Sheldon, on his very best day is warts and all. That's his very best fucking day. I personally can respect Sheldon on his very best fucking day, and I do remember that there have been some of those. There have been a couple. I can remember when he assisted Purple Tinker by letting his channel host a charity stream for... uh, I forget the name of the charity, but it was on Purple Tinker's behalf. I know EQD as well as Horse News covered it. Though he opted to pass on managing the finances, and that's understandable, there have been a lot of times, for example, where things perhaps might not have been so cool, when Stardust was in the PFC chat that Sheldon ran, and many people in that chat were chanting rape at her. She ran out of the room and was dragged back in, and when Sheldon did show up, he told Stardust to shut the fuck up about it and stop bitching in the analysis rift. That was the one run by the Looney Turtle, the second rift. I'm keenly aware that life isn't black and white and why it would be tremendously easy to demonize sheldon as completely irredeemable that's just not how life works but i mean he is an asshole i feel comfortable saying that and we could argue where that line is all day but that's not what we're here for and then there's vita vita has been one of the most cooperative people in the recent history as far as the pedophilia outbreak in the fandom I entirely understand why he doesn't want to make videos himself anymore on that topic. It takes its toll. It it hurts. It kind of drains you. The more you find out, the more that you accept that this isn't going to have a happy ending. Vita has done some shitty things in addition to why Vita has helped raise awareness to the public. And I do find that invaluable. He did... Had a friend dump Rift assets back in the day, and then had another friend fill the Google Doc with blood and gore. He did bring about the downfall of the third Rift under Fallen Wish. He did leak Lightning Bliss's assets in an attempt to piss me off. I do recall the tweet before going to bed last New Year's, which, by the way, Twitter did uphold Bliss's flag on Vita, despite Vita's Google lawyer foo. And I can get over that. I can. I fucking love Troublemakers. I've loved them since the days of Ben Saint in the First Rift. That's fan warm to you guys. Or TBBBAP. Troublemakers will talk to you. For example, in the anime community, Y-Kick and What the What 
are infinitely more likely to say hi to you than Digibro. There's access that's readily available in Rolling with Low Lives. Love them to death. Assuming Golden Fox or Lightning Bliss or anyone else from that side of the tracks is still watching this, my advice is this. It pays to have a couple of guys who don't mind getting their hands dirty. It's also a really bad idea to let one side get all the people who don't mind getting their hands dirty, because cause I know you're chill with Vita and Sheldon, but that's exactly what I think. And no, you don't have to listen. Some of those guys should try to lure you away from here to there. But if it's not enough without dropping names, I've introduced Black to some of the big name bronies who already liked him. And when I say big names, I'm talking about people with over 100k subscribers. Way up there, bronies. I want you to think about that. I want you to think that there are bronies out there that are that annoyed with the brony analysis community. Part of that is because of I Love Kim Possible a lot. Some of you guys are still doing business with her. And as distasteful as that is, black picking on old Jasper or Eliora, people really, really, really hate KP. And you can ignore this. I would really not share tables with her or projects with her. That's my personal advice. Again, you don't have to listen. Like, I get the distinct feeling if I worked with KP, these people would stop talking to me. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm sure I wouldn't want to chance it. Hit me up on Skype if you want to talk from either side. And if not, good night and good luck, kiddo.